What in the world happened to the original horses of North America? Let's take a look. Look at any children's book about prehistoric mammals and you'll see paintings of large animals roaming wide, unspoiled landscapes. North America, Europe, and Asia were all homes to giants that have long since gone extinct. That includes the horses that did not migrate out of the continent where they evolved. From North America, Equus cabalus and related equidae spread outward over the existing land bridges to Asia, South America, Europe, and finally Africa. These successive migrations took place perhaps a million years ago, up to about the end of the Ice Age in approximately 9000 BC. At this time, the land bridge across the Bering Strait disappeared with the receding and melting of the last glacial sheet, thus isolating the North American continent. In fact, many species of horses roamed the plains of North America up until about 10,000 years ago. Then they vanished. What happened to them? Did the other animals hunt them all down? I don't think they were killed by a meteor, but another event of longer duration but equally destructive happened to some of the largest mammals of North America. If you research how humans first arrived in North America, most modern books will explain the theory that during the last major ice age, tribes of hunter-gatherers walked across the frozen land bridge from Asia. The book First Peoples in a New World describes in detail the discoveries that led to this theory. To be fair, the author also mentions DNA and language analysis research that suggests an arrival much earlier than that, about 40 to 50,000 years ago. Without realizing they were leaving one hemisphere for another, they slipped across the unmarked border separating the old world from the new. It was a world rich in plants and animals where great beasts lumbered past, several species of mammoth and mastodon, ground sloths taller than giraffes, camels, horses, and two dozen more herbivores. Of course, the hunting quickly began as it had been done in Africa, Europe, and Asia for thousands of years. These early Indians hunted such megafauna as mammoths, giant bison, and mastodons. About 8,000 years ago, the megafauna began to disappear. Not only were mammoths, horses, and other large animals hunted, but the loss of mammoths affected the landscape that horses needed. Elephants break major branches and sometimes knock over whole trees when they fed opening up woodlands and transforming them into savanna or shrubland. Mid-sized herbivores in Pleistocene America died out from a combination of human hunting and unfavorable habitat changes that followed from the demise of the mega herbivores. Other books rephrase the same unfortunate story, give or take a few thousand years. Most of America's big wild mammals, including its horses, most of its camels, and other species likely to have been domesticated had they survived, became extinct about 13,000 years ago. A combination of elements, including climate change and overhunting by early man, drove the American equus population to extinction between 10 and 11,000 years ago. It should be noted, the same land bridge that brought the end of the North American horses also allowed them to migrate out to the continents where they thrived. But is this all true? Did the first Americans hunt the native horses to extinction? Not everyone believes it. In 2017, a researcher from the University of Alaska published a paper that claims, many native nations state that they always had the horse and that they had well-established horse cultures long before the arrival of the Spanish. The results of this thesis conclude that the indigenous horse of the Americas survived the Ice Age and the original peoples of these continents had a relationship with them from Pleistocene times to the time of first contact with Europeans. Sometime around 1000 AD, Norse explorers from Greenland discovered for themselves the Labrador coast of northwestern North America. There they met tribes of the Inuit, Ainu, and Makakwa people, who according to the Norse accounts had no large domesticated animals. This makes sense because those cold, rocky coasts tundra and forests are better suited to caribou than horses. In AD 1492, Christopher Columbus discovered the Caribbean islands for early modern Europeans. He returned a few years later to establish settlements and expand the search for gold, leading to terrible conflict and bloodshed. The book Columbus, The Four Voyages describes perhaps the very first encounter of Native Americans and European horses when Chief Guacaganari was invited to dine with Columbus on his sailing ship. 
He was amazed by the strange beast. Horses brought by the Spanish, or according to Guillermo Coma, their formidable appearance did not fail to terrify the Indians, for they suspected the horses fed on human flesh. In AD 1519, in modern-day Mexico, Hernan Cortes of Spain met King Montezuma of the Aztec Empire. The European greed for gold soon led to the devastating battle for Mexico City. The book Guns, Germs, and Steel gives much credit to the superiority of Spanish armor, weapons, and cavalry. But to be fair, the book The Conquest of New Spain makes clear the even greater contribution of local tribes who joined the Spanish to defeat their hated rivals in the Aztec capital. In AD 1532, in modern-day Peru, the Spanish conquistador Francisco Pizarro used his horsemen to ambush and capture King Atahualpa of the Incas. They killed many native warriors and nobles along the way. Not all encounters between Europeans and Native Americans were violent, at least at first. In AD 1607, settlers from England built the town of Jamestown, Virginia, where they met the Powhatan tribe of the Algonquin peoples. Hand drawings made by Europeans in the 16th and 17th centuries show no sign of horses in the Native American settlements, their travels, hunting parties, or warfare. Later, in AD 1620, the English pilgrims who arrived in Massachusetts found similar conditions among the tribes. The Wampanoags, Nossets, and Narragansetts were Stone Age hunter-gatherers and farmers with no domesticated horses. The history of domesticated horses goes back many thousands of years. The earliest reliable evidence for the domestication of the horse comes from the Ukraine, where people lived by herding horses and cattle on the grass steps 6,000 years ago. Without the horse, human history would have been quite different. Europeans could not have destroyed the indigenous cultures of the Americas. An invading force has to have fast transportation and an efficient way to move goods, weapons, and food. Otherwise, it is powerless against the defenses of settled communities. Soon, a few horses escaped to live and breed in the wild. Within a hundred years, they spread all over the grasslands. The Native Americans quickly realized the value of the horse. By the late 1700s, they were used by all Plains tribes. They used these larger animals to carry heavier loads. Hunters ranged farther to find food. And Indians could also build large teepees since the horses could drag a turvoy made of longer teepee poles. Native Americans, such as Comanche warriors, were excellent riders. At a full gallop, a skilled horseman could lean across his horse's neck and fire arrows from under its jaw. So did the first Americans hunt the North American horses to extinction? As an amateur historian, I believe the evidence points to yes. To disprove this theory, I'd like to see some physical evidence, such as horse bones in the remains of a Native American settlement that is between 500 and 2,000 years old. Until then, the extinction theory seems to hold true. To be clear, this is not meant as a criticism of Native Americans. Many species of animals have been hunted to extinction around the world, even as recently as in the last 100 years. And if it's true that the first Americans hunted North American horses to extinction, then the Native Americans of the last few hundred years sure paid a heavy price for the choices of their ancestors. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to this channel for new videos every week or two, and see the description below for a list of books and academic papers featured in this video.